What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Real Big Blue Brands Book Club. Today, we will continue on with another reading. Hopefully, finish up. Probably should have read another page or two to get, if I wanted to keep the last video and this video the same length. But hopefully, finish up the first book of Chronicles. Get a lot of redundancy. A lot of to me is right. Uh, different accounts of the same events, all from the different tribes, including uh, Judah and Israel. Which when I'm listening to a uh, there's some there's some Hebrew songs been a, a, that's been hitting my uh my <coughs> my music playlist. So I don't know if it's Yis e I like it. I would say Israel, but I keep hearing Yisrael like more like a Y sound from from like the actual speakers. So I don't know, but I was gonna go with, we're just gonna go with Israel and Judah. So we're picking up at 1637 in the first book of Chronicles, reading aloud and providing any historical insights or thoughts that I can. So he left there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord Asaph and his brethren to minister before the Ark continually, as every day's work required. And Obed-Edom with their brethren, three score and eight, Obed-Edom, also the son of Jaduthun and Hosa, to be porters, and Zadok the priest and his brethren the priest before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place that was at Gibeon, to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord upon the altar of the burnt offering, continually morning and evening, to do according to all that is written in the law of the Lord, which he commanded Israel. And with them Haman and Judithun, and the rest that were chosen, who were expressed by name, to give thanks to the Lord, because his mercy, sensorality is merciful, endureth forever. And with them Haman and Judithun, with trumpets and cymbals for those that should make a sound, with musical instruments of God, and the sons of Judithun were porters, and all the people departed, every man to his house, and David returned to bless his house. David's temple plans. Now it came to pass, as David sat in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in the in house and house of cedars, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. Then Nathan said unto David, Do all that is in thine heart, for God is with thee. I'm not really sure about but certainly they would have had like organization of putting together the Bible. I'm not really sure again why we're re going back David being alive. Just like the actual, the 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 actual order of the books is not clear to me as to why we would do that. But I don't know if we get an answer on that historically. God's message to David, and it came to pass the same night that the word of God came to Nathan, saying, "Go and tell David my servant, thus saith the Lord: Thou shalt not build me an house to dwell in, for I have not dwelt in an house since the day I brought up Israel into this unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent, from one tabernacle to another." Wheresoever I have walked with all Israel, spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, <coughs> Excuse me. Why have ye not built me an house of cedars? Now therefore, thus shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from sheep coat, cot, sheep, C-O-T-E, even from following the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with thee whithersoever thou hast walked, and have cut off all thine enemies from before thee, and have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. Also I will ordain a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more, as at the beginning. And since that time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover I will subdue all thine enemies, Furthermore, I will tell thee that the Lord will build at thee an house, Solomon, to build temple. And it shall come to pass, when thy days be expired, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me an house, and I will, I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son, and I will not take my mercy away from him, as I took it from him that was before thee. But I will settle him in mine house and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forevermore. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. And David the king came and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I? So again, Nathan is just the, the agency, the commandment, the interpreter. That is the first person, I. And then David says, Who am I? After hearing good logic from Nathan or whatever. O Lord God, and what is mine house that thou hast brought me hitherto? And yet this was a small thing in thine eyes, O God. In the same way if an athlete says, God, help me with this victory today. No one's really sitting there like, something helped you with the victory. You're just assigning your 
excitement to try to be humble. For thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast regarded me according to the state of a man of high degree, O Lord God. What can David speak more to thee for the honor of thy servant? For thou knowest thy servant. O Lord, for thy servant's sake, according to thine own heart, hast thou done all this greatness, in making known all these great things. O Lord, there is none like thee, neither is there any God besides thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem to be his own people, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness, by driving out nations from before thy people, whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. For thy people Israel didst thou make thine own people forever, and thou, Lord, becamest their God. Therefore, now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever, and do as thou hast said. Let it even be established that thy name may be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of God, the Lord of hosts is the God of Israel, even a God to Israel. And let the house of David thy servant be established before thee. For thou, O my God, hast told thy servant that thou wilt build him an house. Therefore thy servant hath found in his heart to pray before thee. And now, Lord, thou art God, and hast promised this goodness unto thy servants. A promise is a guarantee. Now therefore, let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may be for thee forever. For thou blessest, O Lord, and it shall be blessed forever. Philistines and the Moabites subdued. Now after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them, and took Gath and her towns out of the hand of the Philistines. And he smote Moab, and the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. And David smote Hadarezer, king of Zobah, unto Hamath, as he went to establish his dominion by the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand chariots and seven thousand horsemen and twenty thousand footmen. David also hoed all the chariots' horses, but reserved all of them and hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadarezer, king of Zobah, David slew of the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria Damascus, and Syrians became David's servants and brought gifts. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And David took his shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadarezer and brought them into Jerusalem. Likewise from Tib Tibhoth and from Chun, cities of Hadarezer, brought David very much brass, wherewith Solomon made the brass and sea, and the pillars and the vessels of brass. Now when two king of Hamath heard how David had smitten all the host of Hadarezer, king of Zobah, he sent, he sent Hodoram, his son, to king David, to inquire of his welfare and to congratulate him, because he had fought against Hadarezer and smitten him. For Hadarezer had war with two, and with him all manner of vessels of gold and silver and brass. Them also King David dedicated unto the Lord with the silver and the gold that he brought from all these nations, from Edom and from Moab, and from children of Ammon, and from Philistines, and from Amalek. Uh-oh, I might throw away those gifts. Amalek, they should be, they should be smoted by now. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, slew of the Edomites in the valley of Salt 18,000. And he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. David's appointed officers. So David reigned over all Israel and ex executed judgment and justice among all his people. Trials and tribulations, judgment and justice. And Hoab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the host. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, recorder. And Zadok, the son of Ahitub. And Abimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priests. And Shavshah was scribe. First time hearing about Shavshah, but he was a good scribe, or she. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Cherethites and the Pelethites, and the sons of David were chief about the king. Ammonites and, and Syrians are defeated. Now it came to pass after this that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, died, and his son reigned in his stead. And David said, I will shew kindness unto Hanan, Hanun, the son of Nahash, because his father shewed kindness to me. And David sent messengers to comfort him concerning his father. So the servants of David came into the land of the children of Ammon to Hanun to comfort him. But the princes of the children of Ammon said to Hanun, Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Are not his servants come unto thee to, 
for to search and to overthrow and to spy of the land. It seems like a very common occurrence, and rightfully so, people being weary of messengers from all the different tribes of Israel or just the Syrians or everybody else is like, these guys with us or against us. Wherefore Hanun took David's servants and shaved them and cut off their garments in the midst hard, in the midst hard by their buttocks and sent them away. Assless chaps? Is that we made some assless chaps or something? Then they were certain and told David how the men were served, and he sent to meet them, for the men were greatly ashamed. Sensorality ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they had made themselves odious to David, Hanun and the children of Ammon sent a thousand talents of silver to hire them chariots and horsemen out of Mesopotamia, and out of Syria, Machah, and out of Zobah. So they hired thirty and two thousand chariots, and the king of Machah and his people, who came and pitched before Medeba. And the children of Ammon gathered themselves together from their cities and came to battle. And when David heard of it, he sent Hoab and all the host of the mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array before the gate of the city. And the kings that were come were by themselves in the field. Hoab's forces fight the Syrians. Now when Hoab saw that the battle was set against him, before and behind, he chose out of all the of the choice of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered unto the hand of Abishai his brother. And they set themselves in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will help thee. Be of good courage, and let us behave ourselves valiantly for our people and for the cities of our God. And let the Lord do that which is good in his sight. So Hoab and the people that were with him drew nigh before the Syrians unto the battle, and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, they likewise, likewise fled before Abishai, his brother, and entered into the city. Then Hoab came to Jerusalem, and when the Syrians saw that they were put, were put to the worst before Israel, they sent messengers and drew forth the Syrians that were beyond the river. And Shobach and the captain of the host of Hadarezer went before them. And it was told David, and he gathered all Israel and passed over Jordan, and came upon them, and set the battle in array against them. So when David had put the battle in array against the Syrians, they fought with him. But the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew of the Syrians seven thousand men, which fought in chariots, and forty thousand footmen, and killed Shopach, the captain of the host. And when the servants of Hadarezer saw that they were put to the worst before Israel, they made peace with David and became his servants. Neither would the Syrians help the children of Ammon any more. Ammon did not fare well. Rabbah destroyed. And it came to pass that after the year was expired, at the time that kings go out to battle, Hoab led forth the power of the army and wasted the country of the children of Ammon and came and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried at Jerusalem, and Hoab smote Rabbah and destroyed it. And David took the crown of their king from off his head and found it to weigh a talent of gold. And there were precious stones in it, and it was set upon David's head. And he brought also exceeding much spoil out of the city. It's so like Thanos' glove. It's got the, 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 the baguettes <laughs> and bezels. And he brought out the people that were in it and cut them with saws. Wow, that's aggressive. And with harrows of iron and with axes. Even so, dealt, even so dealt David with all the cities of the children of Ammon. And David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. So look, God of Israel is super merciful unless when they're cutting people apart. Obviously. Philistine giants killed. And it came to pass after this that there arose war at Gezer with the Philistines. This is the Goliath one? At which time, though, Sibeche Sib of the Hushathite slew Sipe, that was of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. Well, this is Goliath. And there was war again with the Philistines. And Elhanan, the son of Her, slew Lami, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, Whose spear was, whose spear staff was like a weaver's beam. And we, I remember the weaver's beam analogy. And yet again, there was war at Goth, where it was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were forty, four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot. And he was the son of the giant, and that is the dominant, uh, actually dominant genotype, is to produce uh, the phenotype of six. But it's just again not not geometrically efficient. Those polygons as proved by geometry, <laughs> or anatomy. 
But when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, David's brother, slew him. These were born unto the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Israel and Judah numbered, and Satan stood up before Israel. So that's the first reference to Satan, as opposed to just, I think we've had like evil, but I think Satan as like an individual. Stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Hoab and to the rulers of the people, when they say, they're, they're, they hear the voice of Satan, and it would be the same thing as they know and they're following, you know, insecure or bad logic, as opposed to, they know they're doing something wrong. They're doing something evil, they're physically, empirically aware of it. Oh, Satan said, Satan was in my ear, Satan was telling me this. Now, you just knew you were fucking up, Johnny. Go, number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan, and bring the number of them to me, that I may know it. And who have answered, the Lord, make his people an hundred times so many more as they be. Is that, is that we gonna, we going to juice the numbers? We're going we gonna to buff up the numbers so we got so many more people than we do? But my Lord the King, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then doth my Lord, Lord require this thing? Why will he be a cost of trespass to Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Hoab. Wherefore, Hoab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. And Hoab gave the sum of the number of the people unto David. And all they of Israel were a thousand thousand, that would be a million, and an hundred thousand men that drew swords, a million one with the army. And Judah was four hundred threescore and ten thousand men that drew swords. So Israel is bigger than Judah. But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable to Hoab. Well, what was suppose this, what is what it says? It says, this 21.3 has me a little throw, thrown. And Hoab answered, the Lord make his people an hundred times so many more as they be. So to me that says, again, a lot, a lot of interesting things to me is with the actual numbers of the, the groups were reported correctly. That just says juice the numbers, make it sound like we have more people than we do. So I, I don't know if we, uh, if we have accurate numbers throughout this book. God's anger. And God was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. So it sounds like we did juice the numbers. And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, do away with the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. And the gullibility is foolish. And the Lord spake unto God, David's David seer, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came, on, came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Choose thee, either three years famine or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, while that the sword of thine enemies overtake thee. Or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord, destroying throughout all the coast of Israel. Now therefore advise thyself, what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. It's quite the ultimatum there. It's a lot of, a lot of eyes and drop regardless. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait, rock in a hard place. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord, for very great are his mercies. Sensoralities are mercies. But let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel. So there fell of Israel 70,000 men. So it sounds like he, he, they chose to, again, obviously an exaggeration, but not die by man's hand going to war and will just take the famine. God spares Jerusalem, and God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it, and he was destroying, and he was destroying. The Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough, stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornon the Jebusite. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven, having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. And David said unto God, Is it not that I commanded the people to be numbered? Even I it is that have sinned and done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? <laughs> That's nice. Let thine hand, I pray thee, O Lord my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not on thy people, that they should be plagued. David builds an altar. Then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to stay to David that David should go up and set up an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Onan the Jebusite. And David went up at the saying of Gad, which he spake in the name of the Lord. And Ornan turned back and saw the angel, and his four sons with him hid themselves. Now Ornan was threshing wheat. 
And as David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David, and went out to the threshing floor, and bowed himself to David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, Grant me, to permit is to grant, since around it grants, the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant it to me for the full price, that the plague may be strayed from the people. And Ornan said unto David, Take it to thee, and let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes. So we've already heard this story too. Lo, I give thee the oxen also for burnt offerings, and the threshing instruments for wood, and for the, and the wheat for the meat offering. I give it all. Toto. But it definitely seems like a different offering. And King David said to Ornan, Nay, but I, will give verily, but I will verily buy it for the full price, for I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. So David gave to Ornan for the place six hundred shekels of gold by weight. Not sure about the inflation on that. And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called upon the Lord. And he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. And the Lord commanded the angel, and he put upon his sword again into the sheath thereof. <clears throat> At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him in the threshing floor of an Ornan the Jebusite, then he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses made in the wilderness, and the altar of the burnt offerings, were at this, that season in the high place of Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid because of the sword of the angel of the Lord. Preparations for building the temple. Then David said, This is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. And David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel. And he set masons and hew wrought stones to build the house of God. And David prepared iron in abundance for the nails for the doors of the gates and for the joinings, and the brass in abundance without weight. Also cedar, cedar trees in abundance, for the Zidonians and they of Tyre brought much cedar wood to David. Yeah, I remember those guys. And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be builded for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent, of fame and of glory throughout all countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundance abundantly before his death. That's, this is some kind of new insight since the first time I've heard that story. But yeah, look, that's such a noble cause. I just, I have a young kid, so I have to be, I have the biggest house on the block. Literally. God promises. God's plan. Then he called for Solomon his son and charged him to build an house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, my son, As for me, it was in my mind to build an house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly, and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build an house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. So maybe some regret from David about how, how, how many bodies he's copped. Or if, if he says, you know, the, the house has to be built by pure, pureness, my son. Behold, a son shall be born to thee, whom shall be a man of rest. And I will give him, so that's kind of like the opposite, man of war, man of rest. Kind of a new analogy. So clearly, clearly a new writer here, definitely getting some new dichotomistic pairs for sure. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about, for his name shall be Solomon. And I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. He shall build an house for my name, and he, he shall be my son. And I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. And David's charge to Solomon. Now, my son, the Lord be with thee, and prosper thou, and build the house of the Lord thy God, as he hath said of thee. Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding, and give thee charge concerning Israel, that thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy God. Then shalt thou prosper, if thou takest heed to fulfill the statutes and judgments which the Lord charged Moses with concerning Israel. Be strong and of good courage. Dread not, nor be dismayed. Now behold, in my trouble... I have prepared for the house of the Lord an hundred thousand talents of gold, and a thousand thousand talents of silver, and a, of brass and iron without weight, for it is in abundance. Timber also in stone have I prepared, and thou mayest add thereto. Moreover, there are workmen with thee in abundance, hewers and workers of stone and timber, and all manner of cunning men for every manner of work. Of the gold, the silver, and the brass, and the iron, there is no number. Arise therefore, and be doing. And the Lord be with thee. David's orders to princes. David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying, Is not the Lord your God with you? And hath he not given you rest on every side? 
for he hath given the inhabitants of the land in mine, mine hand. Residents are inhabitants. And the, and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Arise therefore, and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God, to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built in the name of the Lord. Solomon named king. So when David was old and full of days, he made Solomon his son king over Israel, and he gathered together all the princes of Israel with the priests of the Levites. Again, not really sure about the election process, and it's just you appoint the next king, but again, clearly as we've had references to like the congregation where the elders have to like approve, or at least some, some public comment time frame. Duties of the Levites in the temple. Now the Levites were numbered from the age of 30 years and upward, and their number by their poles, man by man, was 30 and 8,000. So interesting enough to be 30 years old, and very similar to like our house and our, our senate, house 25, 30, or the house is 25 and the senate is 30, of which 20 and 4,000 were set forward to the work of the house of the Lord, and 6,000 were officers and judges. Moreover, 4,000 were porters, and 4,000 praised the Lord with the instruments which I made, said David to praise therewith. And David divided them into courses among the sons of Levi, namely Garrison, Kohath, and Merari. Of the Gershonites were Laden and Shimei. And now we have a bunch of names, bunch of names, bunch of names. Now concern, 2314, now concerning Moses, the man of God, <coughs> his sons were named uh, of the tribe of Levi. Hmm. So is, 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 is the Levites direct descendants of Moses then, or something? Now concerning Moses, the man of God, his sons were named of the tribe of Levi. So maybe that's what the fucking Levites is, more direct descendants of Moses himself. Potential. The sons of Moses were Gershon, Elisazer, and of them, and, and they, the, the more sons. 23-24. Twen These were the sons of Levi after the house of their fathers, even the chief of the fathers, as they were counted by number of the names by their poles that did the work for the service of the house of the Lord from the age of twenty years and upward. For David said, The Lord God of Israel hath given rest unto his people, that they may dwell in Jerusalem forever. And also unto the Levites they shall know, nor carry the tabernacle, nor any vessels of it for the service thereof. So now they're not carrying, so maybe carrying the tabernacle is not a privilege. Maybe it's like borderline indentured servitude. For by the last words of David, which would definitely not be direct descendants of Moshe then, Still don't know what the Levites are. For by the last words of David, the Levites were numbered from 20 years old and above, because their office was to wait on the sons of Aaron for the service of the house of the Lord. I remember Moses and Aaron being the two dudes, but like Aaron, the speaker, Moses, the leader, don't still know who the Levites are. So always throws me. In the courts and in the chambers and in the purifying of all holy things, in the work of the servant of the house of God, both for the shoe bread and for the fine flour of meat offering, and for the unleavened cakes, and for that which is baked in the pan, and for that which is fried, and for all manner of measure and size. Fried. Pots and pans. I don't know. Just an interesting cooking word. And to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord, and likewise at even, and to offer all burnt sacrifices unto the Lord in the Sabbaths, in the new moons, and on their set feasts by number, according to the order commanded unto them, continually before the Lord, and that they should be in charge of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the charge of the holy place, and the charge of the sons of Aaron and their brethren, in the service of the house of the Lord. Division of Aaron's sons. Now these are the divisions of the sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, Elazar and Ithamar. I remember those guys. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father and had no children. Therefore Elazar and Ithamar executed the priest's office, and David distributed them, both Zadok of the sons of Eleazar and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar, according to their offices and their services. Assignment for priests and Levites. And there were more chief men found of the sons of Eleazar than of the sons of Ithamar, and thus were they divided. Among the sons of Eleazar there were sixteen chief men of the house of their fathers, and eight among the sons of Ithamar according to the house of their fathers. <laughs> thus were they divided by lot, one sort with another, for the governors of the sanctuary and the governors of the house of God were of the sons of Eleazar and of the sons of Ithamar. And Sh Shemaiah, the son of Nethanil, the scribe, one of the Levites, wrote them before the king, 
and the princes, and Zadok the priest, and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar, and before the chief of the fathers of the priests and Levites, one principal household being taken for Eleazar, and one taken for Ithamar. Now the first lot came forth to Jehoiarib, the, sec the second to Jedaiah, and the third Haram, and the fifth, seventh, ninth, nineteenth. These uh, 24 19 these were the orderings of them in their service to come into the house of the Lord according to their manner under Aaron their father as the Lord God of Israel had commanded him and the rest of the sons of Levi were these of the sons of Amram more names more names more names the brother the sons the sons the sons 24 31 these likewise likewise cast lots over against their brethren the sons of Aaron in the presence of David the king in Zadok and Ahimelech and the chief of the fathers of the priests and Levites even the principal fathers over against their younger brethren division of musicians moreover David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph and of Haman and of Judithun who should prophesy prophecy with harps and psalteries and with cymbals Prophesize with harps, prophesying, prophesizing with music is probably almost certainly just improv improvisation. And the number of the workmen according to their service was, of the sons of the soft, names, 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 names of all, all these, and so 25, 7. So the number of them with their brethren that were instructed in the songs of the Lord, even all that were cunning, at, was Two hundred four score and eight. So two hundred forty-eight. I think again four scores a unit of ten. That's not too many. And they cast lots, ward against ward, as well as small as the great, the teacher as the scholar. Now the first lot came forth to Asaph to Joseph, and the second to Gedaliah, who with his brother were sons were twelve. The third to Zachar, his sons and his were twelve, more numbers, numbers, numbers. Division of porters. Concerning the division of porters, of the Korhites was Meshulamiah, the son of Korah, of the sons of Asaph. And the sons of Meshulamiah were Zechariah, the firstborn, Jediael, the second, more names, numbers, 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 26, 8. All these are the sons of Obed Edom, they and their sons and their brethren, able men, for strength for the service, were three score and two of Obed Edom. So I think 32. And now there's 18. Now there's listing more numbers. 26, 12. Among these were the divisions of the porters, even among the chief men, having words against one another to minister to the house of the Lord. And they cast lots as well as the small as, as well as well the small as the great, according to the house of their fathers, for every gate. And for the lot eastward fell to Shulamiah. Then for Zechariah, his son, a wise counselor, they cast lots, and his lot came out northward, to Obed-Edom southward, and to his sons, the house of Asupim, and Shupim, and Hosa, the lot came forth westward, with the gate Shalachalith, by the causeway of the going up, ward against ward. Eastward were six Levites, northward for a day, southward for a day, and toward Asupim two and two, at Parbar westward, four at the causeway, and two at Parbar. These are the divisions of porters among the sons of Kore and among the sons of Merari. What's a porter? Drop a comment if you know the actual function of what a porter is doing. Guards and other officers. And of the Levites, Ahiha was over the treasures of the house of God, and over the treasures of the dedicated things. As concerning the sons of Laden, the sons of the Gershonite Laden, chief fathers even of Laden the Gershonite, were Jehili. And the sons of Jehili, Jetham and Joel, his brother, which were over the treasures of the house of the Lord. Of the Amramites, Ramites, and the Izharites, the Hebronites, and the Uzielites. And the Shubos, blah, 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 blah. 26, 27, out of the spoils won in battles did they dedicate to maintain the house of the Lord. Nothing says serving your God like the spoils of war. And all, this, all that Samuel the seer, and Saul the son of Kish, and Abner the son of Ner, and Hoab the son of Zeruiah had dedicated. And whosoever had dedicated anything, 
It was under the hand of Shilomith and of his brethren, of the Israelites, Chenaniah and his sons, were for the outward business over Israel, for officers and judges, and of the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his brethren, men of valor, a thousand and seven hundred, were officers among them of Israel, on the side of Jordan, westward, in all the business of the Lord, and in the service of the king. Among the Hebronites was Jeriah, the chief, of, even among the Hebronites, according to the generations, vibrations, generations, of his fathers. In the fortieth year of the reign of David, they were sought for, and they were found among them mighty men of valor and Jezer of Hiliad. And his brethren, men of valor, were two thousand and seven hundred chief fathers, whom King David made rulers over the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, in every matter pertaining to God and affairs of the kings. Captains serving monthly. Now the children of Israel, after their number, to wit, the chief fathers and captains of thousands and hundreds, and their officers, that served the king in any matter of the courses, which came in and went out month by month throughout all the months of the year. Of every course were twenty and four thousand. Over the first course of the first month was Hashobim, the son of Zabdil, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. Of the children of Perez was the chief of all the captains of the host of the first month, and over the course of the second month was Dode and Ahohite, and of his course was Mikloth, also the ruler, and his course likewise were twenty and four thousand. The third captains. Okay, we're going to skip this. I don't really care who, who, which captains are serving in which month. It doesn't really, doesn't really do much for me. Rulers of tribes. Furthermore, over the tribes of Israel, the ruler of the Reubenites was Eleazar, Eleazar, the son of Zetri, of the Simeonites, Simeonites Shephatiah, the son of Machah, of the Levites, no, of, 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 skipping 27, 23. But David took not the number of them from 20 years old and under, because the Lord had said he would increase Israel like the stars of the heavens. So more of a preser preserving your own bloodline as opposed to like having some concern about people being younger than the age of 20. Hoab and the son of Zuruiah began to number, but he finished not, because there fell wrath for it against Israel. Neither was the wrath put in the account of the chronicles of King David. <coughs> Interesting, so... So, because, because there fell wrath for it against Israel, so that's either a statement of just like, they couldn't complete the, the count or whatever, or simply they're admitting they just, they just lied about the numbers, which again was what David was, was sitting against. So some new insights to David's story, this was certainly not in whenever the king's story was going on. Overseers of David's substance. And over the king's treasures was Azmaveth, the son of Adiel, and over the storehouses in the fields, in the cities, and in the villages, and in the castles, was Jehonathan, the son of Uziah. And over them did that the work of the field for tillage of the ground was Ezri, the son of Chelub. And over the vineyards was Shimei, the Ramathite. Over the increase of the vineyards for the wine cellars was Zavdi, the Shifmite. And, 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 we're skipping over the overseers. Which is, what is the vineyards, is it olive trees, what are, the, what are the goods? Treasures, vineyards, olive trees, herds, camels, flocks. Yeah, so gold, silver, precious metals, wine, and sheep. And then there's counselors and stuff. David's instructions for the temple. And David assembled all the princes of Israel, the princes of the tribes, and the captains of the companies, that ministered to the king by course, and the captains over the thousands, and the captains over the hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possession of the king, and of his sons, and with the officers, and with the mighty men, and with all the valiant men unto Jerusalem. Then David the king stood up again upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren, and my people. As for me, I had in my heart to build an house for the rest of, of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and for the footstool of our God, and he had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, and hast shed blood. So that least sounds like David has some, some remorse about at least some of the battles. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my fathers to be king over Israel forever. 
I don't think we had that insight whenever we read the first account of David's reign. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to, my, to make me king over all Israel. Solomon to succeed David. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon my son to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments, as at this day. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that ye may possess this good land, and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou... Thy, the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart, and with a willing mind. And the Lord searcheth all hearts, and understandeth all the imaginations, vibrations, imaginations, of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary. Be strong, and do it. Plans for the temple. Then David gave, it, David gave to Solomon his son, the pattern of the porch, and of the houses thereof, and of the treasuries thereof, and of the upper chambers thereof, and of the inner parlors thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat. The mercy seat? Not, so, not sure what they're referencing specifically there. And the pattern of all that he had by the Spirit, of the courts of the house of the Lord, and of all the chambers round about, of the treasuries of the house of God, and of the treasuries of the dedicated things. Also for the courses of the priests and the Levites, and for all the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and for all the vessels of service in the house of the Lord. He gave of gold by weight for things of gold, for all our instruments of all manner of service, silver also for all instruments of silver by weight, for all instruments of every kind of service, even the weight of, for the candlesticks of gold, and for the lamps of gold by weight for every candlestick, and for the lamps thereof, and for the candlesticks of silver by weight, both for the candlestick and also for the lamps thereof, according to the use of every candlestick. And by weight he gave gold for the tables of shoe bread for every, for every table. What about, the, where's the shit of wood? We need some more shit of wood. And likewise silver for the tables of silver. Also pure gold for the flesh hooks and the bowls and the cups. Yeah, as, as we've read, Solomon went, cra went crazy with the gold drip, that's for sure. And for the golden basins he gave gold by weight for every basin, and likewise silver by weight for every basin of silver. And for the altar of incense, refined gold by weight, and gold for the pattern of the chariot of the cherubims, that spread out their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Any, and do I give any biological credence to the cherubims being, you know, obviously non-human, <laughs> like ancestors, maybe potentially, 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 I don't know. Uh, all this said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me, even all the works of this pattern. Oh no, God is writing through Moshe. Nope, Mo Moshe's just realizing things and passing on traditions. David's charge to Solomon. And David said to Solomon his son, Be strong and of good courage and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou, thou hast finished all the work of the service of the house of the Lord. And behold, the courses of the priests and the Levites, even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of God. And there shall be with thee for all the manner of worksmanship, every willing, skillful man for any manner of service, also the princes and all the people who will be holy at thy commandment. Yeah, Solomon had plenty of time to build the house and had like 7,000 wives. I think it was like 600 wives, like 300 concubines. Solomon definitely laid some pipe in addition to laying the foundation of the, the house of God. Offerings for the temple. Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon my son, whom alone God hath chosen, as yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. And he did build a house of God and like a house for a king too. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God, and gold for things to be made of gold, and the silver of things of silver, and the brass of things of brass, and iron of things of iron, and wood for things of wood, and onyx stones and stones to be set, glistening stones and divers colors, and all manner of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have of, I have of mine own proper good, of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God, 
over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, even three thousand talents of gold, of the gold to Ophir, and seven thousand talents of the refined silver to overlay the walls of the house with all. I forget, I forget if it was the house of God or the house, the king's house was made of all gold. But remember, the Philistines tore that shit down like, like real quick right after that. The gold for all things gold, and the silver for all things silver, blah, 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 blah. And who then is willing to consecrate, censorate, consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? We're at 29.6. Then the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of the thousands of hundreds with the rulers of the king's work offered willingly and gave for the service of the house of God of gold 5,000 talents and 10,000 drams and of silver 10,000 talents and of brass 18,000 talents and 100,000 talents of iron. Drop a comment if you have any physical weight conversion for what a talent might be. And they with, with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced for that they offered willingly, because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. And David's praise to God. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation, and David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father for ever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness, and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is thy kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is power and might. And this, this exaltation is no different than an athlete, modern day, saying praise be to God. That is how much older the concept of single, singular individual proving consistent logic really is. And in thine hand it is to make great, and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee, and praise thy glorious name. But whom am I, and what is my people, that we should be able to offer so willingly of this sort? For all the things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. John Carroll, it all goes to one person, but will definitely not acknowledge me. That would never occur. For we are strangers before thee. Yeah, you guys are retards before me. And sojourners, as were all fa our fathers, our days on the earth at, are as a shadow. And there is none abiding. O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee and house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand, and is all thine own. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart, and hast pleasure in uprightness. Uprightness, As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things, and now I have seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of, of the thoughts of the heart of thy people, and prepare their heart unto thee. Don't, don't, don't forget, people don't forget. I'm just keeping a legacy alive. And give unto Solomon, my son, a perfect heart to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy statutes, and to do all these things, and to build a palace for the which I have made provision. And David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God, and all the congregation blessed the Lord God of their fathers, and bowed down their heads, and worshiped the Lord and the king. So again, David's the king. He's speaking as a single individual in front of a congregation. He's speaking for the people as a, as a solitary the solitary unit. So no reference to an actual individual as opposed to like a mythical person or anything. And they sacrificed sacrifices unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings unto the Lord on the morrow after that day, even a thousand bullocks, a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. Solomon's reign and did eat and drink before the Lord on that day with great gladness. And they made Solomon the son of David king the second time and anointed him unto the Lord to be chief governor, and Zadok to be priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David his father, and prospered. Sensorality prospers. And all Israel obeyed him. Yeah, in modern day we have no leadership at all. And all the princes and the mighty men, and all the sons likewise of King David, submitted themselves unto Solomon the king. And the Lord magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. And David's reign in death. <clears throat> and I think, I think Solomon, really since Moshe had to dip out of Israel or Egypt, I really think the, the Solomon's reign was like the first time at least that I'm remembering, like really like a peacetime. And David's reign in death. 
Thus David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. And the time that he reigned over Israel was forty years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. So now we have Hebron, Jerusalem, and Samaria. And Samaria might be Judah. And he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. And Solomon his son reigned in his steed. Now the acts of David the king, first and last, behold, are they, they are written in the book of Samuel the seer, and the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the book of Gad the seer, with all his reign and his might, and the times that went over him, and all over Israel, and over all the kingdoms of the countries. And like anybody in modern day, the more prolific you are, the more books would be written about you. So now, now that is... That is three new texts that we have not referenced before, in addition to the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel, the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah, the Book of Samuel, the Book of Nathan, and the Book of Gad. Well, we did, the Book of Samuel might be the book of, like, the little Book of Samuel we have already read, but as we read a Book of Nathan, well, let's finish the last verse. With all his reign and his might, and the times that went over him, and over all Israel, and over the kingdoms of the countries. So that is the end of the first Book of Chronicles. Do we have in the actual Bible, is there a book of Gad and, of, and or Nathan? Because there's certainly books of Samuel. So do we get to, if, because if it's not, then those are, those are also unknown, unknown or lost texts. Yeah, there's no Gad. Certainly books of Samuel, though we've already read those. And what was the other one? Sam, Nathan. Is there a Nathan? I think there's Nathan. No. Nope. Yeah, so it sounds like the books of Nathan and the books of Gad were kind of lost again. So maybe that's why we're rehashing, because Samuel was David's, David's predecessor. So, this is actually an interesting read. I thought the whole books of Chronicles would be totally boring after the first read of this one. That was rather interesting. We had a couple new things that I commented there on that I thought were the mercy seat. Uh, man of rest as being the opposite of man of war. This is the first reference to kind of Satan as an individual. But we had some more. We had some more. Definitely had some more insight into David about again why he didn't build the the the, the house of God or the house of the king it was because he was a man of war, where Solomon was a man of rest. So that was actually new insights as opposed to the first reading of, of whatever book accounted for uh, David's life. So actually kind of interesting historically there. Oh, and the other thing was it seemed pretty openly that David admitted to you know inflating the population numbers. So again, as a historian, it's always interesting just to see the size of the different groups. But if they're lying about it, then <laughs> we have no idea whatsoever. Because it's like 110 score more. So it's like put an extra 10 people or an extra or an extra zero at the end of the people. Don't really don't really know. So that, that, was, that was actually rather one of the more interesting readings uh, recently in the real BBC. So we'll finish it up there. Finish with the first book of Chronicles. Obviously, this was a little longer than the last episode, and I wanted them both to be at the same length. Who gives a shit? So. Provided any historical insight I can. Thank you for watching and catch you next time on The Real BBC.